Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to Stella Good, Stella Good Academy. Public, uh, we are the subject for today is public sector accounting. So we are starting by 10 a.m. today. As of today, is 1909, 2021. So this is the accounting technical scheme, West Africa. So uh, this is for the exam of part two students, public sector accounting. This, we can also call it as the government sector accounting. So as user, the general examination tips. First of all, ensure you get to the exam hall 30 minutes before the exams and identify your seats. This is one of the most important things is to identify seats. As you know, there are a lot of candidates coming for the exams and uh, different seat numbers will be given to each person to ensure you get there 30 minutes before the exams so you can easily find your seat. As you know, you are in ATS2, you will have the experience in ATS1. And some who have to retake some course who have that experience. So you will have learned from it. So you have to get there 30 minutes before the exam for you to get yourself ready. Once you get to the exam, oh, do not panic. That is when you found your seat and each paper is being distributed to everyone the booklet, just do not panic, as at that will increase your level of anxiety and thereby making you easily forget what you already know. You understand? So you don't have to panic, you just have to relax, stay focused as you are prepared for this. Three, if you are given exams question paper, the first thing you should do is read carefully the instruction to have a better understanding of what you are required to. Now, you are going to experience this in answering our question here. So you're able to understand that you have to always carefully read the instructions so you can be able to solve the question adequately and efficiently. So it will give you your desired result. That will be effective. The effectiveness is to pass. If you come across any question you do not understand, just understand, do not be scared. This usually happens since you are, we can't cover all the parts, but you, at least you cover 80%. And start, start, and do not be scared and start, and start by not wasting time on the question. Do not start with those questions first, just go ahead answering the ones you already understand, then come back to the tough ones later. And five, make sure you conclude, round up your work at least 10 minutes before the scheduled time so that you can cross-check your work properly. Number five is important. Maybe you have to hold on to a wristwatch for you to be able to time yourself and not be delayed. Then the additional tips is that basic readiness. Get your pen, that is the biro, ruler, exam, docket, and calculator. Especially for courses that ask uh, calculation, like this PSA used to have some calculations in it. Be mental and emotionally, psychologically ready. Mental and emotionally, psychologically readiness. Sleep well. At least, was, uh, this used to occur. We don't sleep before exams. At least, just take a four hours sleep, like I do. Four hours sleep before the exam. Board. Like you have a paper in the morning, then in the afternoon, you're already having a serious headache due to lack of sleep. Yeah, it, the body is not a machine. You have to give it its own needs. And part of the daily need is to sleep. At least, sleep for some time. Then get up again and do not overstress yourself. That's just the thing. Do not this is our body needs to be taken care of, not a machine. Do not overstress yourself. Your mental, 
health is very important and your emotional well-being. So be 100% focused, avoid distraction and avoid unnecessary panic. That is the fear. If you can remove fear, you can do anything. Like a say we say, faith can move mountains. Of course, that's true. Believe in yourself and be self-confident. What you know is enough to pass. At least if you cover 90% of the pack, 70% to 90%, I don't see how you won't pass. So just be prepared to give what you know and be hopeful that you pass. Read carefully all the instructions on the top of the examination script. Read it very, very, very carefully. And always start reading the case study and appendix and the examination question requirement. Take note specific demands of this question. Reread the question requirement very well to ensure complete understanding of what is required by understanding the key facts of each appendix. Now, now, as we all know, we are about to start. Click, click to share. Have a copy of this on your timeline. Click to share. Have a copy of this on your timeline. And if you are just joining, joining, welcome to the class. Please kindly say type hello or say hello in the comment box. If anywhere you are, anywhere in Africa, West Africa, even in other countries, Apart from Africa, I am coming in back to write the ATS exam. I'm gladly happy to have you. And in in the comment box, kindly give us your location. Kindly give us your location wherever you are, so that I can acknowledge you. If you have any question, kindly drop it on the comment box. I'll gladly see to that. So. So the first questions, as you can see, we are starting PSA. PSA. That is public sector accounting. You also know it as government sector accounting. Now, the first question of the day is, and the objective we have, government financial management system consists of, one, planning and programming, Roman figure two, budgeting, three, audit and review, Roman figure four, budget execution, accounting and control. The answer to that will surely be everything. The answer to that will surely be everything. Common financial management has to plan and pro, uh, do the programming. There has to be a budget. That's the plan. I have to have and audit and review. Review what they've done and audit it for correction. After audit, then you see a review. Then budget execution. You have to execute the budget you've prepared. Then you have to account for it and create a control, maybe an internal control over it. So it's all of the above, but all of the above, we are all gathered in C. This is one which has Roman figure one, Roman figure two, Roman figure three, and Roman figure four which comprises of everything. So let me get my pen then. So C. So we have C as the answer to that. So we move to the next question. Which of these following is excluded in the cost of inventories in accordance with IPSSAS 12, IPAS 12? 1. Import duties on purchase made. B. Storage costs necessary in the production process prior to further production stage. C. Handling costs related to acquisition of supplies d abnormal amount wasted materials e cost of 
conversion of material into finished goods. So, the answer to that is D, abnormal waste of material. Okay. So the answer to that is D. The advantage of fund that's number three the advantage of fund accounting include all the following the advantage of fund accounting includes all the following except as you can see it's not inclusive you have to be careful this this with except exceptional so we have it it is simple to operate it does not provide information on debtors and creditors It facilitates coordination planning. It ensures financial control. That is the E is used to highlight government policies. So we are looking for the exception there. As you can see, the advantage of fund accounting is very simple to operate. It's simple to operate. As you can see, A is correct. Uh, A is not an exception b it does not provide information on debtors and creditors that is false because it provides information on debtors and creditors so the answer to that is b but let's go to c and see it facilitates coordination and planning of course it facilitates when you have a fund accounting system it facilitates coordination and planning since all the records has been recorded in the fin fund accounting and d it ensures financial control you can uh, when there's a fund accounting available you can easily create a financial control over your expenses and income and e it is used to align government policy of course it used to align how government financial instruments have been used through the fund accounting so uh, since we go back to b which is the incorrect answer it provides information on debtors and creditors so b b is the exception now four The following serves is as a control over the payroll by the salary sector section. The following serves as a control over the payroll by salary section. So we have it as Roman figure one cash book variation ad advice. That is Roman figure two. Roman figure three, we have variation control. The following serves as a control over payroll by salary section. As you can see, the following serves, as you can see, variation advice, negative, variation control, no, cash book is the correct answer to that. And we have it as D. A number five, we have A dash unit is a ministry or department that has no control whoever over any of its record. A dash unit is a is a ministry or department that has no control whatsoever over any of its record. A dash unit is a ministry. Or department that has no control whatsoever over any of its record. A non-self accounting, sub-self accounting, 
self accounting d above the line and below the line the answer to that is simply a non self accounting click on to share a copy click on to share to have a copy of this on your timeline if you are just joining welcome to the class please kindly type hello in the comment box and your location so that i can acknowledge you if you have any question kindly drop it on the comment box anywhere you are from you can kindly drop your question in the comment box and i'll gladly acknowledge you now number six we have the ippis this is the integrated personal payroll information system it's a centralized computer based on payroll and management system that is aimed at what reduction of payroll fraud a control of payroll fraud b c reviewing of payroll fraud c d aggregation of payroll fraud e elimination of payroll fraud one the main aim of integrated personal payroll information system in the uh, public sector is simply to eliminate payroll fraud that like where we have ghost staff where we have ghost workers so this is to eliminate payroll fraud that is paying ghost workers paying on uh, on people that are not working in the government it's just to completely eliminate that and this has helped the government for years on these particular issues we have it in the early days where there are paperwork only paperwork whereby uh, uh some power starters agents can just bring out so so many numbers of workers and the embezzlement and there will be corruption and fraud in that so the, uh, the complete aim of ippis is to eliminate payroll fraud and we have the answer as e let move to seven the fund set aside by government to support a pro uh, to support project support project which are financed by foreign donation the fund set set aside by government to support projects these are funds to support projects which are financed by foreign donation is a revolving fund intra-government service fund debt service fund d counterpart fund e capital project fund the answer to that is the counterpart fund these are funds set aside by government to, which are financed by foreign donation just to support some projects they are they are put they are put always put aside to support some projects it's not revolving fund it's not intra uh, intra-governmental service transfer whereby you transfer from one department to another by ministry and it's not debt service these ones are funds that are used to uh service debts like a uh, loan loan paying paying some particular interest for a particular time and the answer to that we are as i repeat is counterpart fund the fund set aside by government support project which comes from foreign donation now we move to eight government integrated financial management information system that is the gifmis i i remembered when i was doing my ets this question popped in in the theory 
He was asking me the reasons for government integrated financial management information being established. Uh, I is often asked if you can check the past question. So let's go back to this question. Government integrated financial management information system, that is GIF MIS, is a tool faci to facilitate change to better public financial management. And this can be achieved through the following, except A, we have, it provides opportunity to move to treasury single account. As we all know, the treasury single account is a single account which the government run to, uh, to avoid fraud. It increases the number of stages in transaction process. It provides better access to information that can be used to improve physical and operational management. It uses federalizing risks by enabling greater transparency. E, it uses the opportunity for manual intervention. So we all know that it provides an opportunity to move to treasury single account. So I, that is inclusive. And B, it increases the numbers of stages in transaction. No, it does not increase the numbers of stages in transaction. It's not making it more bureaucratic in nature. It's making it more simpler and straightforward. Then C, B is not our answer. Which, which that uh, phrase is quietly wrong because it decreases the numbers of stages in transaction. It does not increase it. So B is our answer. And C, it provides better access to information. Yes, they have a, a, a government inter, a integrated financial management information has been able to let government have easy accesses to, to physical and operational management, to be able to use our physical monetary policies very easier in carrying our government activities. And it reduces federal risks of employing greater, greater transparency. It allows us to have greater, it allows us to see, to see, that's the meaning of the transparency. It allows us to have an in-depth of what is going on in the government. The government integrated financial management shows us the full in-depth of how funds are being used, are being generated, and how they are being uh, put to expenses. And how income has been have been generated. So it creates full transparency. It reduces the opportunity for manual intervention. The manual intervention is that it creates it creates an automatic correction to things. It creates an automatic. It makes things look so automatic that it does not need any intervention any manual intervention so the answer as i recall the answer to that is d it decreases the numbers of stages in transaction process now we have nine which of these following is a document that should accompany a transcript i come again which of these document should accompany accompany a Transcript. As we all know, transcript. Transcript is a sure skeleton. It shows this complete skeleton of how things become a whole body. So we have nine. Nine option to be group register. B original checkbooks. C original cash book. D check register. E cash book register. So for us to know which of these following is a document that should accompany a transcript. A transcript will show it really shows the skeleton. So we have to have the original cash book with it. We can't the group register. We don't need the group register. This group register is meant for uh, workers register and the original checkbooks or check transaction are used to reconcile with the original cash book and checkbook register no 
because they are all the transactions in the schedule are also in the cash book and not only the cash we don't need the cash book register we only need the original cash book whereby all transactions have been induced into so the answer to that is c So, number 10, when expandable store not fully consumed is returned to the store, it will be, it will be charged on, it will be charged, it will be charged by A, crediting votes of charge, debiting on allotted store debiting vote of charge crediting unallotted store issuing of srv or transfer note updating ledger and bin balance with addition e registering it in return store register the answer to that is simply a crediting the vote charge you have to credit the vote charge and debit the unallotted store the answer to that is simply Okay, so we move to our theory, our filling the gap. So before we get there, before we get there, kindly share to have a copy of this on your timeline. Kindly share to have a copy of this on your timeline. So if you are just joining, welcome to the class and kindly type hello in the comment box and your location so that I can acknowledge you. Anywhere you are from, any other country apart from Nigeria you are from, you can, Facebook is general, is everywhere all over the world. You can have access to Stera Good Academy, one of the leading tutorial center in Nigeria. So if you have any question, kindly drop it on the comment box. If you have any question, kindly drop it on the comment box. Now, you move to fill in the gap. One, we have contents of board of survey report include a statement of on the exact amount of loss sustained or involved. We all know but the board of survey is uh, a board involved in checking, noticing the, uh, the total amount of stock currently, currently available. So no matter what, the exact amount of loss sustained or involved will always occur in their report. Or if there is none, it will be reported. If there is, it will be reported. So the answer to that is true. The survey board do that. The answer to that is true. Two, we have inquiries commissioned by government to find out the cause or causes of an event so that MAD media actions may be taken is inquiries commissioned by government to find out the cause and causes of an event so that the remedial actions may be taken is is simply the board of inquiries the board of inquiries will make inquiries for the government is the uh, is the board set up to make inquiries, it simply makes inquiries for the government. So it is the board of inquiries that makes. I'm trying to get my pen now coming up. I'm coming to write that board. 
Sorry. But but of but but of inquiries. Board of Enquiries. Board of Enquiries. It's a Board of Enquiries. So, move to the third question. Move to the third question. This is an independent appraisal activities within an organization for the review of operations as service to management, as service to management, as service to management. Please come in, sir. As service, as service to management within an organization for the review of operation as as a service to management and managerial control which com functions by measuring and evaluating by measuring and evaluating evaluating the effectiveness of other controls is known as let me come again with the question it says an independent appraiser activities, an independent appraiser of activities, of activities, sorry for this short interruption, so we have it at number three, an independent appraisal activities within an organization for the review of operation as a service to management and managerial control, which functions by measuring the ev and evaluating the effectiveness of other control is known, is simply known as independent internal, internal, let me, is known as internal audit. An internal audit is an independent appraiser activities within an organization to review all the operation as to review all the operation as service to management and managerial control, which functions by measuring and evaluating the effectiveness of other control. The internal control measures the functions of other controls. It evaluates them and give a report of it so that it can be reviewed. We have it as an internal control. It always um, is uh, uh, the internal. The internal audit, in the internal audit is an employer. Is an employer within the organization. Is on the 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 only particular job they are given is to review the operations as a service to the management. Just to review. The operation as service to the management. So the answer here is internal audit. Now we have four. What is the financial statement that shows the source and uses of cash for? For a period, what is the financial statement that shows the sources and uses of cash for a period? It's simply the cash flow statement. The cash flow shows the income, uh, how, uh, how, uh, how transactions are being made 
how transaction have been made in and out the cash flow simply shows all the informations of how caches are being moved from one period to another the answer to number four is simply is simply cash cash flow cash flow statement now number five a document used for summarizing and transmitting interministerials or intergovernmental transaction is called what it's simply called the supplementary transcript this is a supplementary transcript is used for summarizing and transmitting interministerial or inter governmental transaction is used for just to be transmitting the summary summarizing and transmitting and transmitting some particular informations or a document from one status to another from one ministry to another ministry so we call it supplementary transcript these are transcript the supplementary transcript is used for transmitting document from one parasata to another, from, or we say from one ministry to another, or department, from one department to another department. So we have number five as supplementary. transcript so move on to to the theory and if you are just joining you are welcome this is terra good economy anywhere you are from please you can kindly say hello in the comment box and give us your location now move on to the question in the theory where we have number one the national assembly is charged with the role of monitoring the financial activities of the executive state the responsibility of these following communities of the national assembly so the national assembly simply creates committees on on public on public sector it simply creates some uh, committee on public we have it on public sector we have it on public sector for uh, public on public sectors they create a committee for public sectors uh, for public sectors which is the government so in this national we have one to be public finance committee we have appropriation appropriational committee and we have other functions committee and public account public account committee so under this we would like to give you more explanation on this so So we have the uh, we have it as public finance committee. This is a committee is responsible for the receipts of appropriational bill made up by annual expenditure estimates and other proposal of government for the consideration of national assembly. This is a committee that is responsible for bills, bills receipts of appropriational bill, appropriational bill receipts. Made up annually. These are expenditure estimates that are made up and annually, and other proposal from government 
for consideration to National Assembly. This committee is involved in the budgetary purpose, in creating budgetary purpose, in bringing out all receipts involved in the operational bill, making up all annual expenditure estimates and other proposals of the government. These are all expenditures that will be carried out. This committee is involved in giving details on how expenditures will be carried out, bringing in all the receipts that will be rece uh, received on the appropriation bills for the concentration for the consideration of National Assembly. Did not then when you bring it up to the National Assembly for it for his decisions on it. He prepare it and give it to the National Assembly. So the public finance committee, let me let me let me put it down for you here. One uh depend. We have it here one public public finance public finance committee public finance committee this sorry Uh, I think no need for me to write on that because of our time. Let me just get it done for you. So we have a professional bill. We have a professional committee. The professional committee is set up. It's simply set up, up by the National Assembly with the responsibility to pass or passing in a professional bill into a professional act. This is when the public sector presents the receipts and all, all preparation for uh for the uh for the national assembly on bills on this my operational bills. Then when is it being passed? When it's being passed by the national assembly, it will. Yeah, when it's being passed by the national assembly, this committee, operational committee, will be the one to prepare the operational bill into operational act. It will become law for execution it will become law for execution this committee is involved in bringing it up as law let me now give you the full definition a personal committee the responsibility is the passing of a personal bill into a personal act in order to give authorization to the estimates after examination of various sub communities the operational committee is in effect the old house permanently when it sits and passes the bill into law as an act. So after the public finance submit it, then the National Assembly deliberates on it. Then that is the process where a professional committee is being set up for all what it has been approved in the National Assembly by the professional committee to make sure it turns into law. He brings this out to turn it into law. He brings it out to turn it into law. Then we have other functions committees. The committee is responsible for the examination of individual estimates and contained in the appropriation bill as they relate to ministry departments. The proper performance of these roles is a major control mechanism known as executionary oversight function. The other function is that it's a for the for for the examination of individual estimates that is of the operational bill that is from each department from each ministries from each federations federation ministries each each ministries will have to after the breaking down of this uh, operational uh, from uh, after you have to break it, uh, the bill of art so that we we'll look at the, how it's been execution, how it's been executed by other functional committees, other departments. We have different depart um, ministries. We have the Ministry of Aviation. We have the Ministry of uh, Power. We have Ministry of Work. We have so many ministries under the government. So after the operational 
committee has worked on the act and is being passed into law, then the functional committee would be set up to look into the executionary part of the operational bill. Now, we move to public account committee. The committee receives audit public account and other special audit report, examine and debate on the content and submit it submit its report to the findings and recommendation to the o out now this public account committee this one is public account committee this one is set up just for auditing purpose to check balance on all the things that has been carried out by the function committee in exercising the operational appeal being approved being executed so this public account committee is involved in auditing what is really what really happened what really happened what was carried out was it exact what was made is it the road for example the ministry of work said he wants to repair the roads of ibadan to lagos the bill is being passed then after the functional committee carried out their work from there that is the ministry that is the department now the public account sector we have to audit the work is it up to adequate is the money spent on what we really want that's the function of the public account committee so for you to get the full gist of the definition just simply write this down the committee receives the audited public account another special report and examine and deliberate on the content submit its report on its findings and recommendation to the whole house to see the work has been done satisfactorily. so we move to question two brief a brief discussion on the following one the appointment of ministry of finance and two we have constitutional provision on the power of auditor general for the federation roman figure three the legal framework that governs the operation of the auditor general general now when we go for the appointment of the minister of finance the minister of finance is an officer on political appointment he is being politically appointed and the political appointment comes for the control and management of public fund of the federation and the ministry of finance is under a democratic dispension is appointed by the president after due consultation uh, consultation by the approval of the senate the, before a ministry a minister of finance is being is being taken in a recommendation will come from the house then from the house when the recommendation comes in from the house when rec uh, uh, recommendation comes in then the president will select and after the president selects it will be taken down to the house so the house will have to sit on it and deliberate on the decision of the president of appointing this was also person as the minister of finance after the deliberation then the house will now decide yes this person is capable this particular person is capable of handling the public finance position the minister of finance position after this being done then he will be be he or she will be the minister of finance then we have the roman figure two which says provision constitutional provision on the power of auditor general for for the government this simply means the power being given or being invested in the auditor general of the federation the auditor general has the power to request for information and explanation necessary for duties so a let's just go with a he has the power he simply has the power power to access books and records of all ministry and extra uh, extra ministry departments at res as reasonable time that reasonable time simply means there are some records that won't be ready at some times and it will be ready at some time 
So a, a, an auditor cannot ask for a record which is not available, a record which is supposed to be available at the end of the year, which you are uh, which the auditor asks for at the middle of the year. So that's where at a reasonable times comes in. He has the auditor general has the power to request for all the books, all the books of transaction from different ministries and extra uh, extra ministries, ministry departments. Any department, he has the power to ask for all the books of transaction in any ministry, in any department, in any public sector department. He has the power so that he could go through audit process. To go through audit process, we have B to be power for information and explanation necessary for his duties. Power to request for information. He has the power to request for any information. Any information concerning the public sector transactions being made, he has uh, the adequate power to ask for any information. Like I've said, for A, then we have B, power to carry out special investigation. Power to carry out special investigation. Uh, An auditor has the power to go into any ministry and demand, or not even going and demand for uh, and demand for their for for the document being used for any transaction in that department and go ahead and form an investigation, investigation team on that department. He has the power to do so. And the Office of the Auditor General operates within the following legal framework. We have it, Roman figure three, the legal framework that the governor that governing the operation of the, the auditor general and the legal framework that governing the auditor general is simply the constitution what is written in the condition the power being given to him to do this and that is being written blankly on the constitution of nigeria and audit acts the audit act the legislative audit act the statutory the previous case law the previous case law and we have the financial regulation. That is simply the financial regulations that guides the financial statements of each prostatus. The financial regulation that guides each prostatus. You uh, uh, an auditor has to know what guides the audit uh, the financial statement being prepared by the public sector. What are the rules? What are the don'ts and do of the financial? statements in preparing the financial statements then the on lastly the factors other factors to look at we look at the economy efficiency and effectiveness we look at the economy and effectiveness and efficiency look at simply the economy how it's being managed how things has been managed and how effective it is what are, are the results adequate to what we uh, budgeted then how efficient, how it works. Is it working efficiently? Not only producing, but is it working efficiently? Is it sustainable for the next coming years? Then, um, so we move to number three. Move. So we move to our question here. We have it as a uh, carry local government statement of revenue of a revenue expenditure for the year ended thirty one. If you are just joining, welcome to the class and please kindly type hello in the comment box and your location so that I can acknowledge you. If you have any question, kindly drop it on the comment box. Now, this question This question is for Ekoelo local government which have the assets and liability the fixed deposit is 
25 billion bank balance 288 uh 228 000 cash at 42 000 ordinary shares in ind limited 29 million 810 000 other investment 10 million naira and we have the advances motorcycle 120 thousand motor vehicles 200 thousand deposit liabilities 1 million deposit land houses and savings recessively is 2 million 1 million five fifty thousand and we have the eggs you are giving the additional information expenditure for the year we have the head distribution 101 licenses fees finances rent which are the figures in front of them so prepare the general uh, revenue balance on the first of january 2016 was one million and the account was coded one for the revenue and two for the expenditure prepare a statement of revenue and expenditure for the year ended 31st december so now Let's prepare this. So we start. We start here. Let me get my pen. So we start here. Uh, start here at um i'm having i'm having little issues with my pen trying to i'm trying to get this done so we can kick start on it then we have it like I'm trying to get hold of the pen to prepare. So, before, let's try and review what we have done so far. So, we have, we have the answers to this, which is the government financial management consists of consists of the system we have one planning and programming the budgeting and we have our uh, roman figure one planning and programming roman figure two budgeting roman figure three audit and review roman figure four budget execution and accounting control so the answer to that was c as you can see which of these following is, uh, is excluded in the cost in the cost in the cost 
in the cost of in, uh, inventory in the account accordance to IBIS2, IBIS2, then import duties on import duties import duties on purchase made we have b storage costs necessary in the production process prior we have the answer to be abnormal amount wasted the advantage of fund the advantage of fund the advantage of fund the advantage of fund include all the following except and we have the answer to be b then the following service to control over the payroll by salary section so let's now move back to the theory we are after we have reviewed all the questions here a non five was non self employment now let's move back to the theory So my pen is back. We have it as Ekeum Kawi. Government statement statement of revenue and expenditure. For the year ended. So we have the revenue. Yeah. And we have our narrow sign. Yeah, and yeah. So we have our expenditure. Our expenditure is to go back to the question under expenditure we have personal department Have the personal department, which is ten thousand eighteen million million seven eighty. They move which has. of 2001 we have to accounts department which is 9 million now 
five million three two zero. You have the office of the chairman. Office of the chairman. I think thousand five four zero. The yeah, public relations department twenty four. We have cottage hospital. We have costage hospital at seven million. Then we have agricultural department. Before the agricultural department, I think, let me check. Finances. We have the agricultural. We have the agricultural department. Twenty two million. You have the office of the secretary. That's one million. They have the capital expenditure. Hundred. Hundred million. So our revenue was because due to our time, we will, we will not be able to complete this. But I believe we all have our textbook to check on this. So I would like to say thank you for being with with me through the class and your contribution bye for now and good luck in your exams and if you have more questions to ask kindly join our free telegram class
God bless you. Take good care.